Inside these bubbles is the highest energy density fuel in existence. And when it burns, the only emission is water. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make it. So making this fuel is as easy as it is dangerous. I don't recommend trying this at home. I do recommend subscribing to my channel so I can do this kind of cool stuff for you. But some of you may have already guessed this fuel is hydrogen. 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 It's the simplest element around, but could well be a game changer when it comes to turning around our dependence on fossil fuels. Hydrogen is a colorless, odorless gas and is the first element in the periodic table. And it really doesn't take a lot of effort to produce it. We're going to start with an ordinary glass filled with some distilled water. Now distilled water, much like myself when I tried to stand in for John Williams, is not a very good conductor. So we're going to want to add an ionic compound such as baking soda to help the electricity flow through the water more efficiently and I'll explain more about this later. To separate water we're going to need a power supply. I use my neighbor's car battery for this one. And stainless steel works best for the anode and the cathode. I borrowed a couple stainless steel spoons from my neighbor, connected them to his battery, and if you look closely as the spoons are submerged in the water, something amazing is happening. A flurry of bubbles are cascading off the spoon towards the surface, and it almost looks like this water is boiling, but there's actually something much more cool happening. The process of separating water like this is called electrolysis, and electrolysis is going to occur anytime we have current flowing through water that has an ionic compound dissolved in it. Water molecules are made up of hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. And water molecules typically like to stay like this as it requires extra energy to break the covalent bonds and pull them apart into oxygen and hydrogen gas. And we get the energy to break those bonds from the power supply we have connected to those two metal plates. Think of an electron bond kind of like different types of relationships. Water is like the old married couple that while having a decent ability to stay together, they don't really like change and typically they only end up separating if outside energy is applied. But due to the nature of the type of bonds that water molecules have, it also doesn't allow current to pass through it very easily. So a material's capability to carry current is typically based on the number of free electrons it has. This is an example of some copper atoms passing current. Notice that the outermost electron is allowing current to pass by, while the rest of the electrons have a stronger connection to the atomic nucleus. This electron is referred to as the free electron and it's why copper is a good conductor of electricity. Pure water has no free electrons and like I mentioned, it doesn't carry current very well on its own. Because of this, we need to add something that can carry the current, but we also need to be careful what we dissolve in the water prior to separating it. So most tap water contains chlorine, so it's not a very good idea to use it for electrolysis. During the process, it will be released as a gas. In gas form, it could cause symptoms such as blurry vision, burning pain, blisters, fluid filling your lungs, so about the same effect as two joules and a can of Coke. A safer option commonly used as a conductive additive is baking soda or sodium bicarbonate, which is made up of C for carbon, O for oxygen, H for hydrogen, and this bad boy right here with the initials Na+, it stands for, you guessed it, a sodium ion. If the conditions are right and current can flow, these ions are interested in taking an electron, but have trouble committing to hold on to them when the bit of pressure is there and will pass them along at the first opportunity. The rest of the baking soda molecule will also break down during the reaction, the carbon will bond with some oxygen and form CO2. Hydrogen will split and build up on the negative terminal. And when I was animating this, I noticed it kind of looked like a duck. So I just decided that I'm going to represent baking soda as a duck from now on. So this is baking soda, the conductive duck. And when it comes to electrolysis with water, he's quite the home wrecker. So when we add baking soda to the water, current can now flow from the negative to the positive terminal. Since electrical current is the flow of electrons from an area of higher negative charge to an area of lower negative charge, the electrons in the path of the current flow will be pulled down towards the positive lead, and this breaks down the bond in the H2O with help from our friend, Mr. Soda. Hydrogen atoms will make their way to the negative lead, where the electrons are being emitted from, and here they will pick up an extra electron, bond with another hydrogen, and the oxygen will do the same dance on the positive terminal. And once enough of these pairs have built up on the plates, they form bubbles of gas and rise to the surface. There is also heat generated during this process. In fact, almost 50% of the energy supplied from the battery is wasted as heat, with the other 50% getting stored in the hydrogen and oxygen gas. And if we want to release this energy, we simply need to start the chain reaction by introducing a source of heat, such as an open flame or Jason Momoa, and the hydrogen breaks its bond and joins with the oxygen atom to once again form water. 
The reaction will release electrons, causing a rapid increase in molecular kinetic energy and form an expanding pocket of ionized air. This is typically experienced as an explosion. To make my bubbles, I made this assembly here. It's a plastic jar with a scrubbing pad in the bottom, and then another plastic jar inside of there with a bunch of little holes in it, and another scrubbing pad inside of there. The lid for both jars have been glued together, sealing both of them separate from each other. Then I inserted two copper tubes, made a connection down to the scrubbing pads, and sealed them off so no air could escape around the edge of the tube and I filled it with a water baking soda solution. So you can see that the hydrogen gas generated stays on the inner container and the oxygen stays in the outer container. And this makes it easy just to vent the oxygen and to capture the hydrogen in my little tube where I can stick it into the bubble solution and make my hydrogen bubbles. Now let's talk about using an electrolysis device to help power a car's engine. There's a lot of videos on YouTube like this. The way the system works, which is the theory of how the system works, I was very comfortable in trying the system. Generators, I wanted three additional generators because I wanted more hydrogen in trying the system. Oxyhydrogen gas inside the cylinders where it will be burnt and help you save on fuel and save on emissions. But despite popular opinion, there's negligible benefit to this if the power to separate the water into gas is sourced from the alternator. Any gains would eventually end up with a net loss, much like my cryptocurrency investments. Honestly, how a person drives a vehicle typically has more impact on the efficiency of an engine than any aftermarket modification will. And if you really believe this will make a difference, most of the time people drive as if it was making a difference. The reason it doesn't work is because anytime we convert energy from one form to another, we will experience losses. We already know that we lose on average about 50% of our input electrical energy as heat when splitting water and the other 50% is converted into the chemical energy stored in the hydrogen and oxygen gas. In the engine, on a good day, we'll lose a whopping 80% of our input energy as heat when converting the chemical energy into kinetic energy. Then we'll lose another 50% of that energy, converting the kinetic energy back into electrical energy. So even with gains in engine output, it won't offset the amount we lose due to the amount of energy we just radiated away into the atmosphere. So that was your crash course on how electrolysis works. Please like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And let me know down in the comments if you disagree with any of the information I said. I'm thinking that there's gonna be a few of you that don't agree with everything I said about running your car on hydrogen, oxygen, gas. And maybe I'll do another full length video designated to just that topic in the future. So as always, take care of yourselves, stay creative, and I'll see you next time.